and welcome to Travel in Chinese. My name is Mark Rosewell, but I'm better known in China as Da Shen. I'll be the host of this new series, helping you through the dialogues and language lessons. You may recall a previous series called Communicate in Chinese that was broadcast on CCTV 9. It's now available in bookstores across China. Well, response to this series was incredible, and we received email and letters literally from all around the world. Now, Travel in Chinese is not really a sequel, but we have incorporated many of your suggestions and comments into making this program even better. This time around, we're going to be focusing on language and situations common for travelers in China. We're going to be learning vocabulary and sentence patterns that can be used in a wide variety of situations. And we're also going to be learning a lot about the culture and customs of China. This time, we're going to be following a family, Huang Renhao, who has been sent to work in Beijing for two years. Huang Renhao, America, New York. His wife, Xue Mei, is a reporter. Along with their daughter, Xiao Jie, they're looking forward to spending some good quality time in China. No matter whether you're just a beginner or an advanced learner of Chinese, I'm sure you'll be able to pick up a lot from this new series. Now let's see Huang Renhao and his family and follow them as they first arrive in Beijing and go through all the formalities. Hello 这是写哪儿<笑> 你最好多写一些文章，让外国人好好了解中国。Ladies and gentlemen, our plane will be landing shortly. Please make sure that your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. 飞机要降落了，嗯，您坐好吧。终于回到家了。您来中国的目的是什么? 祝你们在中国过得愉快。哎，行李在哪儿呢？应该往前走吧。嗯，好。Now let me walk you through today's dialogue. When you arrive in China, you normally have to fill out two forms. One is an entry card that you show to a customs agent. Besides your passport and visa information. You also have to indicate where you intend to stay in China. Now, for most travelers, this is simply a hotel or a guest house. You also have to indicate your reason for coming to China. Now, this could be simply as a tourist or to visit a convention, to visit relatives, or even to work in China for an extended period. Many airline stewardesses and customs agents can speak English, but it's always best to use this opportunity to practice your Chinese. When Huang Renhao offers to fill the entry card out for his wife, he says, Now you may know that gay means to give, but here it's used slightly differently. Here it means to do something for you, or to do something on your behalf, and it's followed by the verb 写, to write. So, 我给你写 means 
I'll write it for you. 新闻报社，我给你写吧。谢谢。<笑>雪梅 is looking forward to their stay in China. She says, "We can stay in China for a is a very common verb that indicates you can or are able to do something. Here, it's used with the verb 生活 to live. We can stay in China for a We can live in China for a length of time. No more short trips." 这次公司派你来中国，真是个好机会。我们可以在中国生活一段时间了。应该 is used to indicate that something should be possible. Xue Mei wants to know where they can pick up their luggage, but Huang Renhao doesn't know the exact place, so he says, "Ying gai wang qian zou ba." It should be ahead. We should just keep walking ahead. Well, that's a lot to learn in a few minutes, isn't it? But don't worry, we'll take it slowly, one step at a time. 哎，行李在哪儿呢？应该往前走吧。嗯，好。Now let's take a little bit of a break from our language lesson. You know, when many people start studying Chinese, they're a little bit confused about the difference between Beijing and Peking. After all, is it Beijing duck or Peking duck? Is it Beijing opera or Peking opera? Unfortunately, people use both terms, and each side seems to think that they're the most correct. Now, the Chinese name of the capital city hasn't changed; just the Romanized spelling of the name. In my view, Peking is just a wrong spelling that became popularized many years ago. The city's name is pronounced Beijing, and it should be spelt in English with a B. However, the name Peking was used for many years, and it eventually stuck. Some people insist on using Peking because they think that's what foreigners are used to. Others use Beijing for the city name, but keep Peking for well-known names like Peking Duck or even Peking University. Regardless, you can use either Peking or Beijing, but at least in my view, Beijing is more preferable. In the dialogues, we came across a few language points that we should probably spend some time looking at more closely. For example. 哪儿 Where? In Beijing, it's common to use the r ending. In other parts of China, the expression 哪里 is more common. 哪儿哪里 They mean the same thing. For example, 你们住在哪儿 Where do you live? 你们住在哪儿 How about 你从哪儿来 Where do you come from? 你从哪儿来哪儿卖火车票 ？Where do they sell train tickets？ 住址写哪儿？写饭店吧，房子还没有租好，只能先住饭店了。Here's another language point. 给 Here, 给 is used as a preposition, as in for somebody. For example, 妈妈给儿子收拾房间。The mother tidied the room for her son. 妈妈给儿子。收拾房间。他给我介绍了中国的交通情况。He told me all about transportation in China. He introduced that situation to me. 他给我介绍了中国的交通情况。饭店的名字是明月饭店吧？对，德杰。嗯，我给你填吧。嗯，谢谢。That tells us a little bit about the use of 哪儿 and 给 Let's look at another point. 应该 should do something or should be some way. For example, 如果他坐两点的火车，现在应该到了。If he took the two o'clock train, he should have arrived by now. 如果他坐两点的火车，现在应该到了。他是在中国长大的，应该看得懂中文。He grew up in China. He should be able to understand Chinese. Or to read Chinese. He is in China. He should be able to read Chinese. It is already March. It should be warm by now. It is already March. It should be warm by now. 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 March. It should be
Now let's spend a moment to look at some of the grammatical structures and sentence patterns that came up in the dialogue. For example, 可以, can, possibly, maybe. Now this expression can be used alone to answer a question. For example, if the question is 可以 something ma, you can answer simply by saying 可以 or 不可以. For example, 我可以用这个电话吗? Can I use this telephone? You could say 可以 or 不可以. Let's take a look at some substitution exercises. 我们现在可以走了吗? 可以. 我可以给你打电话吗? 不可以. Here's another really useful pattern. 是 something 的. This is the way that you can emphasize something about an action, like the time, the location, or the way something has been done. For example, 他是去年九月来的. This emphasizes the time. He came last year in September. 他是来旅游的. This is emphasizing the purpose of the visit. He came for tourism. 他是坐船走的. This is emphasizing the method of transportation. He went by boat. 他是坐船走的. 她是在家吃的早饭. This is emphasizing where she had breakfast. She had breakfast at home. Okay, let's try some more substitutions. 她是从法国来的. 她是从法国来的. 他们是骑自行车去的. 他们是骑自行车去的. Chinaho. 写饭店吧房子还没有租好只能先住饭店了饭店的名字是明月饭店吧对德杰我给你钱吧谢谢这次公司派你来中国真是个好机会我们可以在中国生活一段时间了是啊你也可以到中国各处去看看看看真实的中